guys, first of all, thank you so much for coming out. Um, I was asked to do this back in January. Um, it's one of those things that you just agreed to before you actually realize what you agreed to. Um, it was over coffee at Mean Mug, January 5th. Um, Eric Brown is sitting across from me. He has that smile, you know, and that energy that he always comes with. And he's like, hey, man, you want to do a creative morning talk uh, in May sometime? I'm like, yeah, sure. Shook hands. And then I was like, whoa, what just happened? He was gone out the door um, before I could pull out. But I'm happy to be here nonetheless and talking to you guys. Um, and I hope you enjoy my PowerPoint, which is very on brand, which basically means black and white. Um, so most of the focus will just be on me and talking. I apologize for the less than thrilling visuals during the time. So our talk is about commitment, um, and I'm going to tell you what commitment means to me and sort of how I've tried to live it out through my life. Um, but first, I want to donate 60 seconds of my time up here to you all. If you can pull out your phones, because I know we all have them, um, silence them, right? This is the moment to do that. Silence them, but go ahead and open your notes or anywhere else and type three commitments that you have. Um, you get 60 seconds to do this. And we're going to come back to this, so make sure you actually do it. Just three commitments that you have. About 20 more seconds. All right, we'll go ahead and wrap that up. So, um, commitment to me. Um, here we go. Um, it's a big word. It's a word that has come up a lot in my life um, from childhood all the way through today. Um, and, wait, hold on. That's my script. That is not supposed to be up here. Hold on. Uh, <laughs> There we go. <laughs> commitment. Um, sorry about that, guys. Uh, commitment is important. Right? I'm, now I'm thrown off. To me, commitment is one of the most vital elements of a purposeful life. Um, it's throwing yourself into, into something, deciding what that something is, and throwing your whole self into it, um, and becoming very unshakable when it comes to that something. Right? So it's, that something is very important, but more pointedly, we're going to talk about your relationship with that something, right? Your ability to maintain relationship and maintain intentionality with that something. Um, it becomes your, sort of your North Star. Um, a lot of companies use it as our why, right? We become very committed to our why. We hear that word a lot. Um, but it can be used on so many levels, from company to personal, you know, relationships, career. Um, and it's an important topic, so I'm happy to be here and share that with you all. Let's skip that slide. There we go. Um, so I'm going to take you through sort of three phases of my life um, and tell you sort of where I was, um, what I dealt with, and then what came out of it. I believe that our commitment is tested, right? Um, that's how you know if you're committed to something. If it can go through trial, it can go through struggle, um, it can go through what looks like utter destruction, um, and survive, right? Those are the things that are most important to us. Um, those are things that we hold most dear. Those are the things that we're actually committed to. Um, for myself, um, my commitment has been to my faith, um, and through my faith, my purpose, or what I've found to be my purpose in life, um, and that is the call to leadership. Um, for a majority of my life, I'd say since I was about six years old, um, I feel like I've been called to be a leader, um, to be a role model, um, to be a pioneer, to lead the way um, in so many ways in life. Um, and so I want to take you through sort of three stages of that um, and how that has evolved for me, right? So from Denver, Colorado, let me set the scene. It's the 90s, right? People are wearing clothes that are way too big. Um, this is Denver, so no one really had a good fashion sense anyway. Um, let's see, 90s, 90s. Justin Timberlake was one of the first ambassadors of ramen noodles. Um, he, knew, he knew ramen was going to be big before any of us did, um, his hair. Uh, and so yeah, that's the scene. 90s, Denver, Colorado. Um, a young boy from a side of town that we would probably call the hood, right? A um, side of town that you wouldn't really want to go to. Like if you, if you had people visiting you, you'd be like, all right, let's go around this part. 
Um, that's where I'm from, in Denver, Colorado. And um, that's important because that is where my call to leadership came. Um, where I'm from, it's very difficult for um, people to achieve something that they can't already see. So it's, it's difficult to become something awesome, right, when you're from a situation like that because we tend to be, become what we're surrounded by, right? We tend to become what we're influenced by and what we see. Um, so it's hard to sort of break through that. Um, and early on, I felt the call to exceed what was around me. Um, and so uh, growing up, um, I was gifted with a talent for football. Um, and I, w I decided to use that as my vehicle um, to go places in life um, and use that as my vehicle to lead, right? So I became committed to that sport and that game and being a leader in it. Um, now, struggle, right? Where does struggle ensue? Where was my commitment tested while I was in Denver? Well, I think, I don't think. What happened was somewhere between fifth and sixth grade, um, this thing happened where like I stopped growing like, I didn't get any taller. Um, and I guess football players are supposed to be pretty big humans. So uh, there came a point where I was like, gosh, um, thanks, Mom. Thanks, Dad. Um, I have all this skill, but like, I don't have the size. What am I going to do? Um, you guys have been telling me that like, I'm going to go to college and play football. But when I look on TV, everybody's a giant. And I, I, I can't be a giant, right? Um, and so that is where I was first hit with conflict. Um, that's where I was first hit with that breaking point of, all right, is this something I'm committed to? How can I be a leader in this situation? Um, and through, of course, support um, and sheer will, I decided that's not going to stop me. Um, I'm still going to pursue my dream. I'm still going to pursue um, and honor my commitment to being a leader. I want to lead the way for tiny people to play football, right? <laughs> show, that, show that tiny people can do it, too. Um, and so, you know, I put the work in, right? All the sweat, all the tears, all the hard workouts, all late sprints. You actually do have to work harder when you're at a disadvantage, right? We see that all the time. Maybe you work at a design firm and, you know, you don't have the most artistic ability, but you're the hardest worker, right? You come early and you leave late. That adds up. And so that's sort of the approach that I took um, in those early years when I, when I stopped growing. I said, you know what? I'm going to work really hard. I'm going to stay in the weight room extra time. I'm going to stay um, in the film room for extra time. And I'm going to really prove to myself that I am committed to being a leader, right? Um, because leaders, they aren't shaken easily, right? As a leader, you sort of, the way I describe it is you sort of operate like this all the time, right? You, you don't have, you don't do like big waves, not big ups and downs as a leader. And so um, I stay committed. I stay very um, dedicated to my practice, and it paid off. Um, I was very fortunate enough to get a scholarship to a school in Fort Worth, Texas, all right? I uh, went to Texas Christian University. Um, I was super excited, you know, I was gonna play football. I was like, I'm this leader, you know, I made it out of my neighborhood, I'm leading the way. There's kids that back home that wanna do exactly what I did. Um, and I thought, hey, this is cool, I'm doing well. Um, I'm, I'm holding to my commitment. Um, let me set the scene here in Fort Worth, all right? It's 2010, um, a lot of cowboy boots, um, a lot of country music. Uh, this new word came into my life, it's called y'all. Um, <laughs> and uh, a lot of good food. Um, I think in Texas it's people's mission. If someone like, comes into Texas and you're not from Texas, it's their mission to like, feed you. You know what I mean? So like, every time they see you, there's food in their hands, or like you're going to get food, even if it's like second dinner. Second dinner is a real thing in Texas. Um, and so that's sort of the scene um, and the conditions that I was in, right? So I went from the conditions that I was in Denver to a whole new world. It's a private school now, right? Um, but the negative side is I'm an athlete, right? And I'm a Division I athlete. And there's this whole lifestyle around like Division I athletes and their, their ability to work outside of the rules, right? Um, you guys have seen it probably, athletes in your college that sort of worked outside of the, the norms, got away with things that they probably shouldn't have, um, lived sort of a fast lifestyle, um, very destructive, right? 
Um, so then, um, being in those conditions, I had to ask myself, okay, you know, how can I be a leader? How can I stay committed to who I am, even in this whole new world, right? I'm 18, people are saying, hey, you, you know, you're 18, go have fun, right? Go out, get some drinks, go to some parties. Um, but I decided, no, um, what I'm here for is to succeed, right? I'm here to succeed and be an example. Um, and so what that looked like for me was um, not having, finding a new way to have fun, right? Um, I, I don't drink, um, I have, I've never had a drink yet. Um, all my friends are trying to get me to have that first drink. It hasn't happened yet. Um, I have nothing against drinking. But anyway, uh, so I had to find ways to have fun in a different way so that I can stay committed to who I was. Because, I mean, pretty much in college, if, if that's sort of your route, every Friday or Saturday night is a challenge, right? Every Friday or Saturday night, your commitment to who you are is being tested, right? And by some, some of your best friends are just like, hey, come on, let's do this, right? You're, you're an athlete. This is what we do. Um, and so that's sort of where I was faced with another challenge, right? Who am I? When, you're, when we're 18, we're all trying to figure out who we are. But I had to ask myself, who am I? And how am I going to continue to uphold my commitment, right? The promise that I made to leadership. Um, and then a very large event happened um, that changed my life forever. Um, death, right? Um, it's one of those things that we can't ever predict. Um, it's one of those things that we never know how hard it's going to hit us until it actually happens. Um, and so my grandmother passed away one year on the very first day of two-a-days. Um, so it was like one of the best days of my life, and then it just went like re really low. Um, it was, uh, the year is 2012 or 13. One of those. Um, very first day of two-a-days, right? I go to practice. This is the year I'm going to start, by the way, um, for this cool for this cool school that I was all about, um, trained a lot, and uh, very first day of two days happens. It's a great practice, you know, practice went well, um, everyone looked good, you know, did a little interview after practice, said all the, you know, generic things that football players say, we're looking good, you know, I uh, got a great group of guys with me, and this, this is our year, right? I hit the locker room, I hit the locker room, go back to my phone, and it's just blown up, right? A lot of texts, a lot of missed calls. Um, so I was just on top of the world, and now it's like, whoa, what the heck happened? Found out my grandmother passed away. Um, and uh, long story short, I decided, like, I don't want to play football. There's, like, so much going on outside of this. I played football my whole life, right? So I decided that day, sort of that hour, um, that I didn't want to play football anymore. Um, and then I was hit with the reality of, wow, you know, that's who you've been your whole life. Right? And so I had to check myself and figure out where my commitment was. Um, was my commitment to this game? Because right? remember earlier, um, I said at the age of six, I sort of committed myself to the game. That's how I left where I was. Right? Um, I had to sort of take a, take a self-examine and say, man, is my commitment to this game or is it to being a leader? Right? Um, and to be a leader, you don't, you don't need to play football. You don't need to make it to the NFL to be a leader, right? You can be a leader in so many different capacities. Um, but it was the first time in my life that I ever thought that way. Um, and so it was a new chapter for me. Um, and I was doing mechanical engineering at the time. I didn't feel like much of a leader. My grades were definitely not leading the class. Um, and so I had to figure out sort of what my next step was. Um, and then I got a great phone call from a guy named Cameron Duty. Um, some of you guys may know him. He's the founder of Bellhops, one of the founders. And uh, we had a wonderful conversation that lasted for about an hour and a half. And then at the end of that conversation, um, he says, hey, um, I know this sounds really crazy, but would you like to come to this city called Chattanooga in this state called Tennessee um, and help, me, help us grow this company? Um, and I said, I know this sounds a lot crazier, um, but I'm two weeks into my senior year, and I will be there tomorrow. Um, and so just like that, um, I took a huge leap. Um, what to some would look like a huge gamble, but to me it just looked like a, a necessary next step, right? Um, and I came to Chattanooga, Tennessee. And that is 2014. 2014 I landed here. Let me set the scene. I know you guys live here, but let me set the scene from my perspective. <laughs> um, so I arrive in this city called Tennessee, or this city called Chattanooga, in this state called Tennessee, um, and everyone's toes are out. And I, I'm, a, I'm a little, I'm a little weird. It, I'm like, I'm weirded out because like everybody was just wearing boots where I was from, and I didn't have enough time to really like 
assimilate into that. Um, and then I got to this place and like everyone's toes are out and these things called like chakus or something. Um, and I'm still, I'm still catching up, I'm still in Nikes, but maybe one day. But um, yeah, and, these, and people work in like these places that are like totally unfinished, but they pay rent for it. It's like, you know what I mean? It's like, no, don't put anything on the walls. I like looking at it that way. Um, I, told my, I told my buddy, I was like, hey, we need to get into real estate. I think a trend is coming where we don't have to invest in anything. We just have to like clean it up and people will pay rent. Anyway, um, so that, that, that was sort of my arrival in Chattanooga. Um, and I fell in love with the city, needless to say. But um, the condition I was in. Um, I went from being a football player, right? That was my identity. Um, that's sort of where my commitment was with the underlying but my commitments to leadership, right? To being in college where um, I was a football player, but then I stopped being a football player, and then I was like, am I a mechanical engineer, right? Sort of trying to figure out um, who I was, but sort of this underlying commitment to being a leader, right? And being passionate about what I do. And then now I'm in this whole new city um, doing business. Um, I didn't know anything about business. I always, I always joked, uh, back in, in TCU, um, our biggest school, our most prominent school, was the business school, and I was in the engineering school. Um, and I had a lot of business friends, and they'd be like, hey, dude, like, why aren't you in business? And I'd say, that's because I already know everything you guys are learning. Like, you guys are learning stuff from like, my childhood. Um, but it proved correct. Anyway, um, so I always joked about that. But here I am in this business world that I know nothing about, around people that I don't know at all. Um, and my conditions were sort of like it being a child, um, being a child in a brand new place. Um, which sort of reminded me of how I felt in college, right? Um, when I got to campus, um, I felt like I was a child in a whole new place, right, as we do as freshmen. And then particularly on the football field when I looked like a child. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I'm, so I'm in a whole new environment, um, but it feels very similar to me. Um, and so then, again, I have to check myself, right, and say, all right, who am I? Like, what am I committed to am I, while I'm here? Um, I'm, a, I'm going through a new phase in life, but like, what is my rock? What's my North Star, right? Um, and it was that commitment to be a leader, right? So although I'm new to this world, how can I exemplify leadership, right? How can I be the best newbie there ever, like the world's ever seen? Um, and so again, worked mad hours, as we all do in the startup world, um, but I think I may have doubled hours. I think I worked 48 hours in a day before. Um, at Bellhops, and uh, yeah, just the grind, right? The grind and committing to um, working hard, going the extra mile, right? Um, and then, boom, another cataclysmic event. First, I stopped growing, then my grandma dies, um, and then I'm no longer working at Bellhops, um, just like that, right? Um, and so I'm like, whoa, now I'm in this city, you know, that I know nothing about, I'm sort of getting a hold of this business thing, um, but now I have no job. And everyone thinks I'm crazy for like, not playing football, so I kind of can't like, go back to, to Fort Worth. I had to sort of figure this, figure this out. And um, I decided, uh, hold on, let me take a quick sip. I'm struggling up here. I decided at this point, um, what's been consistent in my life, all right? Um, what have I been committed to since day one slash age six? Um, and that's being a leader, right? Um, that's being unshaken, um, that's being strong, that's being driven. Um, and so that was sort of my, my launching pad into what I do now, which is an entrepreneur, right? Um, and still those same things hold true today, right? Um, as an entrepreneur and as anyone in the startup world, you're tested every single day because every day matters, right? We don't have the luxury in the world that we're in to sort of coast, right? Every day is important. Budgets are running out every single day, right? And so we have to stay on point every day. We have to work hard. We have to put in the extra hours. Um, we have to really live and breathe what is important to us, right? We have to really be in line with our why because no one works 40 hours or 48 hours happily um, for something that they don't believe in, right? Um, and so I'd say now more than ever is when, and we have the, we have the, the honor of being able to do this, um, all of us here, particularly those involved in the startup community, um, is being able to do a self-examine 
and adjust our lives accordingly. Um, I do believe a good company and a good startup um, adjusts its business direction based off of its team, right? Playing off the strengths of your team. They sort of steer the ship along with ownership decisions. And um, I think in doing that, it's important for us to examine who we are, what we're committed to, and testing that commitment. Um, so obviously the easy thing, I'm in the fitness world, right? Um, I own a gym called Onsite, that's our logo. Um, but it's so funny to see what people think they're committed to, right? And seeing once shaken, you know, I think Mike Tyson says it, like everyone has a plan until they're punched in the face. Um, <laughs> then, you, then you sort of figure out like, whoa, I'm not committed to boxing, I'm just enamored, right? So I think it's important to figure out, you know, are you committed to something or are you just enamored? When you're committed, when I'm committed, I feel like I'm living my best life when I'm living in line with what I'm committed to. I feel like it's oozing out of me. It's a part of me, right? It's not like, you know, I walk around with a big shirt that says leader, CEO, entrepreneur, business owner. Um, I don't need like a bright, shiny sign pointing at me all the time saying that. I live it. Right? It's in my blood because I put in the work to become it. Right? Um, and I think that's what true commitment looks like. And we see that in relationships. You know, when you see that new couple, um, we've all seen it. And like you, kind of, like, you feel like if you're this close to them, like they're just like spilling like love on you. And you're like, oh my gosh, you know, chill out, go get a room. And they're just looking at each other, like no physical activity is happening. Um, but that's how it feels when you are in line with what you're committed to, when you're in line with your why, um, and when you're really living it out and grinding it out, right? Um, and so that's what I invite you guys to do. Um, figure out you know, what, is, what is your commitment, right? Um, what are you committed to, and how strongly are you committed to it? Are you committed, or are you just enamored, right? Um, and so what I want to do is revisit those three things in our phone real quick, right? Everyone, everyone takes out their phone. Um, and then just going off of my little quick story, um, are those commitments or are those some things we're sort of just enamored with, right? Um, would, those, would those survive a death near you? Would those survive you losing your job, right? Would those survive moving across the country to a city called Chattanooga, right? Um, and after that, I would say, you know, delete the ones that are least important, right? So of those three, go ahead and delete one. That's the least important of those three. I know it's hard. I know it's real hard. Especially if it's something you think about a lot, because like some, some of us, like I said that, and you already knew your three, you're like, oh man, only three? Um, but let's go ahead and let's, let's simplify, right? Let's give the attention to the, to the two that matter most, right? Great, now we're there, and now this is the hard part, this part everybody hates, but you must choose. Choose that one. Choose that one. That's one of my favorite games. If you're ever waiting at a restaurant, that's the go-to. You must choose. And then ask like the, the person waiting at the, the hostess, ask the hostess. That's when it gets fun. Um, you must choose us or them. Who are you going to see next? <laughs> Forget the list. Um, right, so now we have that one. Um, what's really important is identifying that in ourselves. It's important to self-examine. Figure out what we're committed to. Set goals, right? Vision and goals. I, I recommend doing that all the time. Lululemon does that a lot. Um, that's why I love their brand. Anyway, getting off topic. Now it's important to make it real. Um, I believe something becomes real when someone else knows about it, right? And we have all these things in our head. And sometimes it's easy for us to convince ourselves that we're doing stuff, but no one knows. So it's not really reality. It's dream still, right? And so what I invite you to do, you don't have to, um, but you might feel left out if you don't. Uh, pulling that phone out, having that one thing, and show your neighbor, right? Show your neighbor what you're committed to. This is, this is the moment where you can be a little vulnerable. But what this does is it puts you on blast, right? So now, like, you see what the person's committed to, and you see them on the street, and you're like, hey, you know, are you upholding your commitment? A little bit of accountability.
Right here. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right, kids. Let's wrangle it in. Let's wrangle it in. Let's wrangle it in. I'm happy we did that. That was a hit. It could have gone one of two ways. Um, <laughs> I'm, happy, I'm happy you guys shared. So what we just did was we made it real, right? And we got others involved. So now there's accountability. And then now there's the added pressure of not letting that person down, right? Um, once people know you're about something and you announce it and you make it clear and you make it intentional, that you are about that commitment, it becomes real, right? And it becomes something that you are burdened with, for lack of a better word. But people who are about something, they love that pressure, right? If you are committed to someone in a relationship, you love the opportunity to show them that you're committed, right? You don't, you don't shy away from it. If you're committed to the gym, you love the sweat. You love the struggle, right? If you're committed to growing your business, you love the long hours, right? You love all the brainstorming, all the, what are those called, scrums? Um, you love all that stuff, right? It becomes a part of you. It becomes something that you want to wear all the time. And so for me, my commitment to leadership is something that has become a part of my soul, part of who I am. It's in my blood, right? Um, I like to think of it as a tattoo that, that, that's tattooed on the inside, right? It doesn't need to be shown. Um, doesn't need to be on blast at all. No one needs to see it, but you want people to feel it, right? Um, and so I invite you guys to look at, look at that word that you have, tattoo that on the inside, let it spill into your blood, let it flow through your body, um, and commit yourself to whatever that is. All right? My name is Matt Averyhart. That's it.